This week's reading, Parsha is Parsha's Ekev. And Moshe continues to give Musar, to admonish, to rebuke, to encourage the Klal Yisrael, the last weeks of his life. And he says to them, Voyo Ekev Tishmun. And if you will listen, Esa Mishpotim Elo, to these laws, Mishpotim, it means rational laws. Ushmarte Vasisim Osam, and you will retain them and you will do them. Vishoma Hashem Elokecho Lucha Sabris, God, as a result of this, will uphold the bris. And the kindness which he promised to your forefathers. So there's this famous Rashi, which the Midrash has cited. It could have said, Voyot in Tishmun, and if you will listen. What, is, what does Boshe mean to say, Voy Ekev? Ekev, it's another word for im, if. So Rashi, in Hebrew, the word okev means one's heel. If one wants to crush something, you break, you crush it with your heel. Boy, Akev, it's, lose, it's alluding to something which we abuse, we crush, we neglect, we don't value. If the seemingly light, not important mitzvahs, which people thresh with their, their heels, if you keep even those mitzvahs, he will uphold his promise. If one keeps even the mitzvahs, which ordinary, ordinarily is abused, neglected, ignored, then you will merit the ultimate, as we'll see as the Verses continue to say, God will love you, He will bless you, He will increase your number, He will bless the fruit of your womb, the fruit of the ground, your grains, your wands, your olives, the offspring of your flocks or your herds on the earth which God has promised to give to you. When will you merit all this? If you observe even the seemingly non-important mitzvahs which are neglected, literally, people they just trample on with their heels, then you will merit the ultimate. Now the question is, what's the rationale? Is it because you're taking up the cause of the ordinary mitzvahs or the seemingly non-important mitzvahs? Since you give value to them, therefore, you're so-called the hero for addressing things which are normally ignored. Is that why? Or it's something much more than that? You know, in life, we make decisions. Everything is a choice. Most people, 98, 99% of people, what is the basis for their choice? It's the cost factor versus the benefit. If it's worthwhile, it's worth it, as we say, then we do it. If we feel that the effort, the cost factor is greater than the end result, we don't do it. So now... It comes to our obligations as Jews, Torah obligations. What do people give greater value to certain mitzvahs than other mitzvahs? Certain mitzvahs of the ultimate were more focused, more involved, and were willing to sacrifice to a greater degree. Other mitzvahs, as, it's, as Rashi cites the mitzvah, which is alluded to as Mitzvahs which we neglect, which people trample on, crush with their heels. Why do they choose to crush with heels? Because since it's 
perceived as a mitzvah kalo, as not a serious mitzvah, people don't give it that level of focus and seriousness, and they make a, a value decision, it's not worth it. The effort, the cost factor, the sacrifice, it's not worth it. Now the question is, what is the basis for making these discernments, these differentiations between when is it worth it, when is it not worth it? If one's impetus to do mitzvahs is his own personal gain, then we talk about using your own yardstick to evaluate and measure is it worth it, is it not worth it. Shabbos, it's worth it. Lashon Hora seems to be not as important, although it's a Torah law. Be able to restrain yourself, it's not worth it. It's too complicated. Cost factor is too great. As a result of that, we find certain mitzvahs which are neglected, or as, as is referred to as akiv. People, they tramp along with their heels. However, if a person, the reason why he does a mitzvah, it's not for personal gain. But rather, I do the mitzvah because God wants me to do it. So if it's God wants me to do it, is there a difference? Could, could we make a discernment between Shabbos, Yom Kippur, Kosher, and Lashon Hara? Even the most simple mitzvah, Shaluch HaKan, sending away the mother bird, taking the chicks, or taking the eggs, or honoring a parent, Every mitzvah has the same degree of foundation because every one of them is part of the Tariq mitzvah. It's one of the 613 commandments, whether it's a positive or negative commandment, and we must abide by it because it's God's word, it's God's will. So the only reason why people pick and choose is because what it says in Pirkei Obos, when you serve the master, don't serve the master for the sake of reward. It should be shalom, not the Kabbalah pras. If the impetus to serve God is because it's the word of Hashem, then you keep everything. There's no mitzvah kalah, there's no mitzvah chamura. There's no more severe mitzvah, there's no, there's no simple mitzvah. They're all of equal importance because they're all the dvar Hashem is the word of God. However, the way most people process things, whether it's on a conscious level or subconscious level, we see things more important, less important. Although, on a Torah level, you know, less obligated in the less important mitzvah. Nevertheless, we make that value judgment and we do what's more important in our eyes and we neglect what's less important. So as a result of that, Moshe says to the Jews, if you observe the mitzvahs, even the mitzvahs, the simple mitzvahs, which are normally neglected and abused, the mishpatim, the rational laws, and you observe them and you keep them, you will merit everything. The blessing, the chesed, and every aspect of your life, every endeavor, you will have success at an exceptional level. Why? Because why are you doing it? Are you doing it for your sake or are you doing it for God's sake? If you do it for Hashem's sake, then you merit the ultimate. If you do it for your sake, which is has limitation, because as you're limited, your action is limited. It doesn't have that spiritual profile, because it's you, it's not him. It's less selfless. It's only self-driven. As a result of that, you don't merit the blessing. That's the simple understanding. So the Arachayim HaKadosh says, whenever we find the term Vahoyo, is always an expression of Simcha, joy. Vahoyo, Ekev, Tishmun. If you're able to achieve the level to be as focused on the ordinary mitzvah as the more severe mitzvah, that's the greatest joy because that person sees it correctly. That's Meshav Shitz Al Rav Shlom Naslam Karbun Pras. You're serving the master not for the sake of reward, but rather for the sake of the mitzvah for the sake of the master himself. Well, we have this Balaturim that he addresses the word Ekev. He says, 
We read in Pirkei Ovis, it says, keva Your Torah study should be keva on a permanent level and work should be secondary. Primary should be your Torah learning. Everything else is secondary, meaning at best, it's only facilitate what's primary, which is the Torah, which is one's obligation as a Jew. The letters Akib and the letters, the word Keva, Asi Torah so Keva are the same letters. That's what it alludes to. Alludes to. Also Akib. The heel is on the bottom of the foot. Seemingly the heel is less, least notice. Yaakov was called Yaakov because he was holding on to the heel of his brother, of his twin brother, Esau, as he left the womb of his mother. The heel always connotes humility. You should learn from the heel. The heel is the back of the foot. It follows the toes. The front of the foot, then it goes the heel. You should learn from the heel means the concept of humility. Now, it bothers me. It says, Until the previous parsha, we always spoke about chukim and mishpotim. The statutes and the laws. Mishpotim always connote rational laws. I'm seeing it should say, the statutes and the rational laws. So why are we there that only speak about mishpotim? Now, if you ask any Jew, why don't you steal? Why is stealing not permitted? So you'd say, because it's unethical. And many things, they're immoral. Why does a Jew not hurt another person or damage? Or take not what's rightfully yours? Because it's unacceptable. Because if you understand what a quality human being is and you want to have a society, you can't have the society if these areas are breached. You have to respect your fellow human being. That itself is only a result of proper behavior, but that's not the reason why we do. We don't steal and we don't damage and we don't hurt another person. We don't embarrass another person. That's not the reason. There may be rational laws that we're able to relate to them on a rational level, but the reason why we do them is because of the divine aspect of it. It's God's dictate. That's why we do it. It's not because it's now interest, because if we want to be the quality human being, there's a certain mode of behavior. If that is the approach, then we start picking and choosing what is and what's not. What makes the difference? What puts us within the ethical, moral classification, it gives us that pro profile of being moral and ethical, and what's not, which is not relevant to that. But if you see even the mishpatim, even the rational laws, which we relate to, although but those are not the reasons. The reason why we do anything in the Torah, as rational as we process it, it's not because of the rational aspect of it. It's because it directly relates, and just as the paraduma, the red heifer is the most difficult of the statutes. Not to steal is no less related to our spiritual makeup. And that's why a person is not permitted to cross those lines, which the Torah prohibits. So therefore, the Torah specifically speaks mishpatim, tishman, that even the mishpatim, even the laws which we believe, we understand. And we're able to eat more easily to appreciate the value, but the value is not the social value, it's the human value, but rather it's the spiritual value. Once it's the spiritual value, which we have no understanding, we don't make any discernment between what's more important, what's less important. As long as it's the Dvar Hashem, it's the word of God, we're committed to it, and we do each one as perfectly as the other. And there's no neglect, because based on our own evaluation system, our own yardstick, we pick and choose what's more important and what's less important which is the basis for the neglect.
We find the Pesach, it's mentioned, Tishmun Ushmartem Basisam. You should listen, you should retain, and you should actualize. What are the three levels? As he says, one corresponds to Mikra. Mikra is the text Chumish. Mishnah. Mishnah is the concise codification of the oral law. And Talmud. Talmud is what? Is understanding through the 13 methodologies which are given at Sinai to be able to extrapolate and understand all the ramifications which is derived from the Mishnah. We had the Gemara of the Gemara says that one who, who rules from, based on the Mishnah and he doesn't have the training of Gemara, I mean the Mishnah was not elucidated through Gemara, they're hovre olam, they destroy the world. A person is, is proficient in Mishnah, but he hasn't studied the Gemara, which is the elucidation of the Mishnah, Mishnah, and he rules based on his limited understanding of the Mishnah, that person is a destroyer of the world. Because he doesn't understand the implications and the applications of what's stated in the Mishnah. And that's why we have a Mishnah, you could have a, a number of pages of Gemara to try to elucidate and illuminate what, what Rabbi Yudan Nosi, what Judah Prince had codified in the redacting of the oral law, which is the Mishnah itself. It says, Hashem will uphold the bris if Ekev Tishmun. That we says that the Balturim says, if Ekev Tishmun, Yishmulcha Habris, Shenemar, Bavram, we find Avram Avinu, Ekev Hashashama, Avram Bekoli. It says, Ekev, because Avram had observed my, had heeded my word, the Yishmash Mashmarti. And what? And he upheld. My mishmeris, my law. It's interesting. The Gemara tells us we know that Avram Avinu lived till the age of 175. At what age did Avram come to recognize his Maker? So the Gemara tells us that it was at the age of three, because the Torah tells us Akif Avram had upheld my. Laws, my mitzvahs, even rabbinic laws. The numerical value of the Ekev is 172. For 172 years of his life, he fully addressed the Torah obligation and the rabbinic obligation. That even his even rabbinic laws, Avramavidu observed, was able to keep. That's Ekev. So if you Ekev, if you follow in the path of Avram Avinu, you will merit what Avram Avinu merited. God will love you, Sabal Turb says. Shenemar, it said, we find Avram is a posuk in Yeshaya, Zera Avram Ohavi. The progeny of Avram, my beloved. That's a Hevcho. You will be blessed. In the merit of Yitzchok. After Avram Avinu passed away, Hashem came to pay a Shiva visit and to bless Yitzchok. Uberacho is alluding to the merit of Yitzchok. He will increase in number. In whose chus will he increase our number? Shenemar bo. Prayer of egg, you should increase in number. It's interesting. We find there's nothing in the Jew's life which the reason why we have that opportunity and we're meritorious to the degree we are, even though. In terms of our own personal investment, it's a pittance compared to what the return is. It's all b'schus, it's all in the merit of Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. That because we have the schus of us, 
Therefore, we're able to draw on their merit. And because we have their merit, we're seen in that special level in terms of being worthy. It's everything is their source. That that we merit, see out the Shemaya. We have divine assistance in many areas. That that we survive. That that we're seen as special. It's all in the merit of Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. The whole concept of Korbanos, the three species of kosher domestic species which qualify as a korban, it's only because each one of these species, each one of the others, and Kedoshim, the holy patriarchs were involved. Shor Kesevesky, Volate, the ox, the sheep, and the goat. The ox is Avram Avinu. When, it, when he hosted the angels, it says, El Aboka Rots Avram. The sheep, that's the Ayo of the Akedah. The goat, this is when Avram, Yaakov was instructed by his mother to take the blessings of the birthright, go to my flock and take Shnei take two goats, and I will make delicacies for your father. And the Midrash says it's only in the merit of the three Ovos that these three species represent the Ovos Akadoshim, therefore were worthy of atonement. Because they themselves gave meaning and value to existence, Avram introduced God to the world. Yitzhak built it out to a greater degree. And Yaakov himself was the most perfect of the patriarchs. He was Yaakov Ishtam Yeshivaholim. He was the man of the tent committed to Torah, and he achieved the ultimate level of emes, as we say every day. Titit emes le Yaakov. Give truth to Yaakov, because we always say, what is God's signet? God's signet is emes. Emes. God's signet is truth, and what's the ultimate truth on the absolute level? Torah itself is the absolute truth. And since Yaakov is personified through the study of Torah, therefore it's titin emes le Yaakov. And therefore Yaakov himself was at a level which surpassed Avram's level and Yitzhak's level. And therefore Yaakov himself was the one who merited and was worthy to father the 12 tribes, the father of Klal Yisrael.